Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java and Raspberry Pi programming tutorial series. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at pyjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is about um, basically teaching about oscilloscope and um, we're going to watch a blinking LED basically at 1 hertz here. So, uh, first thing I want to do is open up my website here, pyjava.com. I'm going to select the Pi programming link. Scroll down here to the Java SE, the standard edition tutorials, and select the oscilloscope tutorial. Now, my last tutorial, Hertz Blinking LED, I explained the terms duty cycle and Hertz. Now, in this tutorial, I'm going to introduce you to the term period and discuss a few more things about wiring Pi. I'll be using an oscilloscope to show you the duty cycle period and Hertz of a blinking LED. So, what is an oscilloscope? You know, when you first look at the thing, it looks like some sort of life support medical equipment that you would see at a hospital. Um, it is as if it should be hooked up to someone's finger displaying their heartbeat across the screen over time. Now an oscilloscope essentially measures a heartbeat but the patient is an electronic circuit and beats are voltage values measured over time. Simply put, an oscilloscope simply captures and displays voltage values over periods of time. So an electronic period has a very close relationship with a duty cycle. In my last tutorial, you learned that a duty cycle is measured in percentage, and it is technically the percentage of time that the voltage is high during one cycle. That cycle begins at the time the voltage goes high and continues on with the voltage going low and ends just prior to the voltage going high again. So a period is that cycle and is measured in units of time. As you may remember from my last tutorial, hertz is the number of periods that can occur within one second. Now, of course, last time I said cycles, but it's technically a period is a cycle. So the example below demonstrates a period of 500 milliseconds. <clears throat> I'll go ahead and pull that up on the screen a little bit. A period of 500 milliseconds with a duty cycle. <coughs> Excuse me of 50% running at 2 hertz. Um, so basically you can see here, you know, we got 250 milliseconds high, 250 milliseconds low. This is a 500 millisecond period from the time that it just goes high until it's just about to go high again, right? So as you can see here, we've got two periods in one second, which means this is running at 2 hertz, okay? Uh, so let's fire up source code from the blinking LED and play around with the scope. So let's just go ahead and minimize that. I'm going to pull up uh, this window here and let's pull up our Raspberry Pi. So as you can see I've got the um, I got the Raspberry Pi blinking in LED and it's blinking it at a 50% duty cycle at 1 Hertz there right at the moment. Okay um, so we'll come over here and you can see that uh, you know I just launch the LED blink um, <clears throat> bytecode in the JVM there. Let's go ahead and open this up here. CD Java CD LED blink and we'll just do leafpad LED blink Java. Okay, just take a look at the source code there. And you know you can see here we're sleeping for 500 milliseconds, sleeping for 500 milliseconds, total high. So our total period for this program here basically is one second, okay? So let's bring back over up this here, okay? All right, so the oscilloscope, basically, it has this little probe lead here, and um, what you can kind of see there is that I've got the the ground, the negative, hooked up to the negative LED, and then I've got the, the probe hooked up to the positive side there on the LED, okay? So, um, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just hit this clear button up here. That'll clear off the screen and cause it to do kind of a little refresh here. Now, <clears throat> I've configured my, um, my oscilloscope to display several things right here. So the first thing is period, and you may be able to see this, you may not be able to, but I'm gonna pull this up in some um, on-screen software that I'm running through a USB port on this oscilloscope too. But the period you can see currently is one second. Our frequency is one hertz. Um, our duty cycle is 50%, okay? Now this says plus duty, 
and negative duty. So you can actually split uh, the duty into two different things here, the negative value and the positive value. But the duty cycle, whenever you hear that term, is referring to as a percentage that it's high. Okay. All right, so that's all well and done, but it's kind of hard to see on the screen up there. Um, and you know, I'm gonna hit the clear, clear button one more time here. <clears throat> yeah, let's take just a couple seconds. Okay, so you can actually see it, like from, uh, this is 500 milliseconds high and 500 milliseconds low, 500 milliseconds high, 500 milliseconds low, okay? So that is what that looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and pull over my, yeah, minimize this, pull over my software here. And this is basically software that's that's running, plugged into a USB port here. Okay, um, we're gonna go ahead and clear this out here. You can kind of see it, it'll, it'll run across the, the figures there. But um, we've got, a zero right here and we've got a zero right there okay so each one of these is one seconds these are measuring our our seconds down here right so you can see it stays half a second high half a second low our frequency right over here is running at one one hertz our duty cycle is 50 percent plus duty minus duty is also 50 percent and a period is one second all right let's go ahead and change up our code here <clears throat> and let's Bump this up to two seconds here, or two hertz, I'm sorry. So we're gonna go with 250 milliseconds high, 250 milliseconds low. Let's save that, Control C to break out of that. Um, Java C, LED blank dot Java, compile it, and let's go ahead and run it again. Okay, coming back over here to window you can see this is blinking much faster now okay and up here you can see that uh, that our little flat lines you know basically um, our period here is 500 milliseconds currently we're at 2 Hertz with a duty cycle of well 52% and 48% right okay so even at 2 Hertz we're starting to see some some numbers start to kind of go off a little bit there um, and let's go ahead and just pull up the software here too as well. <clears throat> I'm gonna do a clear on this here. Bring this up into the full size window here. We'll get all our measurements reestablished here. Okay, um, frequency, two hertz, duty cycle 50%, period 50 milliseconds. Right, so each one of these in between here and here is a second, and uh, and basically the, the USB it's a little slow through there, so you can see we've got a period right there of 500 milliseconds and a period here of 500 milliseconds. So our cycle goes high twice in there. All right, let's go ahead and um, let's step this up quite a bit here, because what we're going to experience is we're going to start seeing some degraded results here so um, let's go with a hundred milliseconds on and a hundred milliseconds off right that'll give us a total period of 200 milliseconds which should be right around five Hertz so let's go ahead and save that break out of that recompile that and run it again okay Our LED is now blinking very fast. Screen kind of redraw, and you can see how many of these we're getting per second now. This is showing that we're at five hertz here. Our current period is 200 milliseconds. Our duty cycle is 50%. So we're looking pretty good. We're still holding our own just at five hertz, which isn't uh, which isn't too bad, you know. I mean, because we're controlling all this via software there. Um, I won't even bother pulling up the the other the USB stuff there Whoop, wrong one and let's see let's go over here and we're going to change this now to change it to 10 Hertz so 50 milliseconds on 50 milliseconds off save 
as we as we hit higher frequencies, we're going to start to experience some issues here. So um, let's go ahead and start her back up again. Blinking very rapidly now. You can see this is going just crazy with the amount of stuff we got over there. So, so far we've got 100 milliseconds on our period here. We're at 10 hertz over here, and our duty cycle is saying 60%. Well, that's weird, you know? And our negative duty cycle, of course, is 40%, right? So our duty cycle here is now starting to get a little out of line, right? So... Um, so what we're experiencing that because of basically the runtime class and the exec command, the exec method there. So let's pop back over here to the Raspberry Pi. And so in order to, you know, A, um, you know, get our, our runtime object here um, and then invoke the exec method off of it and then actually have the Raspberry Pi Pi, you know, flip the circuitry to go ahead and turn the thing on and off this rapidly there. We're starting to get a little degradation. So let's go all the way down to 100 hertz, okay? So we're going to have a 10 millisecond period with a 5, uh, with a 50% duty cycle, right? So let's save this. We'll see. And let's run her again. Come out and look at it. This almost looks like it's, you know, just pulsing almost more than anything. You can see that uh, we're almost getting straight lines for these on off things here as well. But we're, we're interested in this. So our period is currently 20 milliseconds. Our frequency is 50 hertz, and our duty cycle is 50%. So the duty duty cycle is held holding as expected. However, our period shouldn't be 20 milliseconds, and we shouldn't be at 50 hertz, right? And I'll just pull up the uh, the USB software here too as well, right? Uh, we'll hit we'll hit clear clear this out, right? To get all fresh results for the current stuff here. So redraw in a second here. Now for some reason it's not getting that stuff and I don't waste too much more time unless it goes here. All right, well, forget about that. We're just gonna go in here. And what I'm gonna do is maybe I'll bring the camera in even more just so we can kind of see everything that's that's on the screen there refocus in okay now you can see we're getting all kinds of strange results because now our period is at 30 milliseconds we're at 33.3 hertz and our duty cycle is well just popped into 50 percent there um 20 megahertz or a 20 millisecond period Frequency is 50 hertz and so on and so forth there. So you can see these values are all over the place from uh, 33 megahertz to 50 megahertz when we're actually trying to push the software. The software is actually trying to push everything at 100 megahertz, right? We should be having a total of 10 milliseconds for our period there. And of course, 10 times 100 is one second. So that's why we should be running at 100 milliseconds. Okay, so you guys get the idea on that there. So um, as you know, we really can't, you know, changing these values to even less, like for example, one and one, that won't uh, that won't improve anything anymore. As a matter of fact, it'll make it even worse here. We'll go ahead and just uh, compile that and run it there. Our LED almost looks like it's solid most of the time, except for just a little, little flicker going on there, right? <clears throat> and you can see our, our frequency, we're still not able to get it above 50 hertz. Our period is still 20 megahertz, and our duty cycle is still 50. Uh, even if I hit the clear button up here to kind of clear off all the results, clear off our average minimum and max is here. <clears throat> when this picks back up there. 
you can see we're really, really having a lot of trouble there. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and, um, and just talk about a few things here. I'm gonna, while we're watching the results on that thing there. Um, so as you can see, we are having trouble generating a clean enough signal at higher frequencies using the exact method of the runtime class. Now there's just simply too much overhead for the Raspberry Pi to handle fast enough. So what do we do? Now the solution to this problem is to use native applications to call the wiring Pi methods. We will do, use, you, we will do this using the, uh, yeah, maybe I'll just bring it over because I'm just reading this from my final thoughts here on this, okay? Um, we will do this using the JNI, which is the Java Native Interface, also known as Java Native Programming. I will show you how to create C and C++ li libraries um, that we can load into our Java source code file and invoke native methods. However, we first need to download and install the JDK for ARM because the Java SE installation that comes pre-installed in the Raspberry Pi is missing key components of the JNI. Okay, so that will be my next tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that, close out of that and um, that's pretty much it. Stay tuned for my next tutorial where we'll install the uh, Java Software Development Kit for ARM. Thanks for watching.